All right, we're back on our Total Boat Sport Dory project right here. And uh, I've been working on it a little bit. The only things I've done to it while you weren't watching is, is I prepared this one layer of the bottom. Now I've just taken some, some cedar, some nice edge grain cedar, and I did glue three pieces together right here on the boat. I isolated those glue lines from the plywood with some packaging tape so that when I glued it together, it wouldn't glue it down. You can see it's still mobile, see? So it's just laying here. And uh, really nothing holding it down except a little nail and a clamp on each end. And uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to say about it is, is that I used a direct transfer system on this just like I did on the molds. When I took the molds from the body plan, you know, on the blown up body plan, uh, I used sheetrock nails right along that line on top of the plywood and then pressed this bottom against the sheetrock nails and turned it over and cut it that way. So that's how I attained that shape. It was a direct transfer from the uh, molds right to the bottom. So once I've got that done, the next thing I'm out to do here is do exactly the same thing I did with the plywood. I'm going to have to plane this back and uh, knock it off on a nice angle and I want to make sure I don't go too far. I need a line up there just to guide myself. So I've got a little gauge like I had made before. It's another one, but it does the same thing. And I'm just going to apply it to the center section here. And I'm just going to transfer the mark that's on the corner of the marking gauge here onto the bottom. And I'm going to transfer it on the back side as well. And now I'm going to move forward and do the one up forward. There really is no fancy tool that I can pull down off the wall to accomplish this little project right here. You know, cutting it out of just a scrap piece of wood like this is exactly what you need to do. It's made for the job, it's cut out so that it skips around the material that's hanging over very conveniently. And uh, even though it's made with a very simple tool, I like to make things as simple as possible, that line is very important to me. I want it on there and I want it on there in the right place because I'm going to sneak up on it fast with an electric plane. No, I'm just clamping the batten through those marks. And the reason why I'm clamping it down is because I wouldn't want to nail through the batten. It would just split the batten up. It's fur. And the other thing is, is that I don't want to nail alongside of it and then just bend the batten around the nails because the batten will kind of roll on me a little bit. So the nature of the batten is it wants to roll. So I just clamp it down. Works fantastic. I'm just finishing clamping back aft a uh, batten down to draw a pencil line. And I've got one more clamp to go right here. I've got a couple of references right here. I've got the mock that I just made, plus I have the center line. So it lines up with both just nice like that. The last thing for me to do is take a peek at it, because sometimes it goes a little flat between clamps. And I'm just going to take care of that by giving it a little tap. That kind of changes the shape of it a tiny bit and corrects it. And that looks really good. Now I'm going to go down this end. And I'm going to sight it from this end as well. I'm going to take one little peek at it, a little tap. That looks really good, too. I just want to make sure it's on all its marks here before I draw a pencil line around it. That looks good. This one needs to move over a tiny little bit, maybe like so. And that looks good. Now. We're just going to draw a line against it. You need a good pencil when you're drawing a line like this. And we've got one right here. I don't know where you get them, but uh, this is the kind you have to have. One with nice strong lead that doesn't break off when you're crossing the grain and stuff. Now here I go again with the electric planer. I've got the trigger on the planer pinned down and I'm holding it on both ends with two hands because you wouldn't want to try to do something like this with one hand. It just won't work. As I'm playing in here, I'm keeping a close eye on the line on the bottom of the boat that I've drawn with the pencil. And I'm also keeping a nice close eye on the plywood part of the mold there because I don't want to touch the plywood part with the planer at all. And I also don't want to touch the line. I just want to sneak up on both of them. So I kind of sneak up on one edge a little bit and then apply a little bit of pressure on the other edge and then sneak up on that and work my way forward until I'm done. I'm switching over right now to a hand plane because a hand plane is a proper tool to do the final touch-up with. You couldn't get that close with the electric plane, but there's no danger at all using the hand plane. It's nice and nice and controllable. So, you know, uh, I've got an awful shop and there's some technique involved here. You know, I try to get a little bit of momentum with the plane before I actually put it down because otherwise it'd be digging in. If you set it down and get the blade in and then expect to push it, well, you can do it, but it doesn't work as easy as getting a little momentum first.
You wouldn't want to use a long plane doing something like this because the surface is not only curved, it's also twisted. And the block plane lays down reasonably flat and you can skew it around different ways and take advantage of it and make sure that the blade is laying down as flat as it can possibly be. I'm just going to check the bevel and I'm going to use the edge of the planer just to check and see if it lines up with the planing that I've done on the plywood. Like so. I've created a little space now between the seat of bottom planking and the plywood so that I could hook onto that very feathered edge of the bottom planking with a rabbit plane. Now I just want to go down that edge with the rabbit plane very, very carefully and just dub off just the tiniest little bit, that last little bit of feathered edge there because, you know, some of it really kind of ends up looking almost like a burr. You know, like when you're shopping in a chainsaw or something. So I'm just going to get that off. And it really doesn't create much of a square edge at all. And it'll actually be filled with glue right there anyhow. So it just makes it look a little bit neater. And uh, I'm done. I just finished extending some of the lines that I had on the plywood up onto the cedar bottom. And I want to explain to you what that's all about. Now, what it all is here is a, a scheduling of all the fastenings and all the frames and all the stations that I built around it all in one. I had to take everything into consideration here because I don't want any extra holes in the boat holding the planking down to the molds or anything like that. If I fasten the planking down to the molds, that's going to have to be one of the rivet holes that's in the boat afterwards, so that one would be temporary. So what I decided to do was uh, divide it between the center of this mold and the center of this mold over here, and I've just simply used a pair of dividers to do it. I took a pair of dividers and I kind of haphazardly uh, set it for length and tried it, just walking it down to the other one and see how close it landed, and if it wasn't right, I would adjust it a little bit until I got it, you see, so I can start at the center there and I've come to a line that's kind of hard to see but there's one right in here and then another one there and then the next flip ends up in the center of the next mold so that's nine and five sixteenths or so now then I took that space and I divided that in three so I divided between this space here or that line and that line in three and uh, I did it exactly the same way I just loosened up my dividers and I set it approximately and I tried it very quickly to see how well it would work and if it needed a little adjustment I'd give a little adjustment and try it again and uh, it didn't take long and bingo there's one two three so I've got it all divided on equal spacing all the way down and now I decide where I'm going to put my frames and the first frame is going to be right here, the next frame is going to be nine or so inches apart uh, right here and the next frame is right here. That's why I darkened these lines up. Now those lines are going to be where the frames are placed and this is where it kind of gets tricky on this boat right here. Now this is one layer of a laminated bottom and what I want to do is cut a slot up through this plywood and up through that bottom for a frame to lay in before I do any other work here. So I've made myself a little router jig right here. Now it's made of just some simple uh, cheap plywood and I've got a little stick here that helps me space it on the line just by sticking it in there like so and fiddling around a little bit and I get it kind of spaced. I've got the line where I want the frame on the center of that slot. Now let me just tack it down and I'm going to show you some more things about this little jig here. This is a little router jig. Like I said, it's made of some very cheap plywood, a couple pieces of ferron strip on both ends and some sheetrock screws. And what it's designed to do is to guide the router while the router and I are cutting a slot right up through this plywood and right up through this cedar to accept a frame that's going to be in that position. Now I've got it positioned right on the center so that uh, it spans that line. The frame is going to be right on that center line right there. So I've tacked it down like I said, but I'm also going to clamp it down because the jig itself is kind of flexible. It's only made of uh, 3 8 plywood. So the surface is twisted and I want to make sure that it doesn't move around and I'm going to twist it right down with a couple of clamps. Now let me show you the router that I'm going to use to cut this slot. 
now. It's got a collet in the bottom of it right here that's placed in the base. That collet rides in that slot right there. So it's being guided very, very closely to the bit rather than ride, riding on the edges of the router or anything. This collet cutting like this works out really, really well. And of course, this is just a straight bit and it's gonna cut a slot right in there. I've got the jig placed right on the center line, like I said. So I just place the router in there like so. It's pretty noisy. So you're gonna to wanna to put headphones on when you do something like this. And I'm just gonna start cutting. Be patient when you're making a cut like this with a router because you just don't have to do it really quickly. There's only a little bit of cutting in front of you to do. So uh, it's not gonna help you to go like a madman here. You go along nice and patient and uh, draw back as you're doing it. I go up one side a little bit and then I draw back and I go up the other side. But you're cutting both sides and all that material is just ejected really, really nicely. And I just don't want to plunge the bit in too deeply because if you do, you start recutting all the dust that you've already cut and you start to smoke a little bit or create a little bit too much heat. And especially when you get up into the cedar because the cedar is oily. And if you cut that too fast, you will get smoke and not a little bit of smoke, you'll get a lot of smoke. So I'm very patient about how I go about it and I break out nice and slow when I'm finishing up because you just don't want to chip it out and mess it up in the end. And then actually what you want to do after that is go up and down both sides one more time with the router up one side and down the other to make sure you haven't left any lumps in the cut and then you're basically done. Now we're going to remove our router jig and there is the slot that we've cut. Now that happened really, really quickly and without almost any effort whatsoever. It's really a matter of getting set up really nice to do something like this and then it kind of comes off very quickly and very easily. And uh, it is neat and it is accurate. And I wanted to show you, this is one of the frames that we're gonna put in. This is the first plastic frame that you get to see right here. It's 7 eighths of an inch, four and aft. It's 5 eighths of an inch thick. It fits right in the slot perfectly just like that. And uh, it is neat, tight, nice, I like it. I think this is a fantastic way to go. I wanted the frames to be notched into the bottom of the boat in some respect, but not go across the center line. So it makes it easy to bail and to set cargo down and different things like that. But you know, if, if the end of your oars or any kind of cargo or anything is to bang into the frames, I don't want it to stress out the first fastenings or rivets or anything like that. So what happens is this really locks everything in place and uh, it's just terrific. So uh, I like it a lot. Uh, we're going to glue the garbage planks down over it. We're going to wrap it with carbon fiber before we put the next layer on it. Once we do that, we'll let that carbon fiber lay up on there just the way you see it like that with that frame in there. But before it's totally dry, we'll yank the frames out like this. And then later on, I'm going to go on to building the boat. And then once it's taken off the jig, I'll simply be able to slide the frames right back into position just like that while the boat's upright and then rivet them in place.